three years in a row in the playoffs, four and five, what it says about the franchise now and going forward. The best path for this team to go all the way. Plus, can the Bills survive another game like Josh Allen had on Sunday? And have they finally figured out the run game? That's all coming up on this week's edition of the Buffalo Plus Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our podcast today. Make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. Mike Catalano, along with Dan Fates and Jenna Cottrell, the two people that are on the sidelines with a camera (laughs) for every Bills game. So they are right in the middle of the action. And guys, as I say about subscribers, and we like when people subscribe, Mm -hmm. give ourselves a little pat on the back here as we've hit 12,000 subscribers. So thank you to everybody for putting us in that spot. So let's start with where we are with this team right now. The playoffs again. And you guys, you're young. You're used to this, right? This is the way it's been. When you cover this team, they go to the playoffs. Jenna, I'm going to start with you. Where's this team right now? Right now, making the playoffs three years in a row and four out of the last five years. Honestly, I just I think it's remarkable when you look at what this team was before Sean McDermott and just the mediocrity that it was. It wasn't even it was bad, but it was worse than that. It was boring. You know, and I think we've talked about that. And now to be at a team that's consistently making the playoffs and not even making the playoffs, but the expectations of this team being in an AFC championship, being in a Super Bowl caliber team. Um, having MVPs, having all pro players. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just think when you look at it, it's it's such a turnaround. I think that's a compliment to Sean McDermott, Brandon Bean, but also the guys that he brought into the building. And just for the fact that you know people know Buffalo. It's not just a team that you're like, oh, it's the Bills, whatever. You know, I, I just think that the turnaround has been tremendous. And with that, though, comes the expectation of winning. And at this point, the Bills really haven't won anything yet. So there's always that determination of of having more to do. But I mean, three straight years, four out of five, that speaks for itself. Yeah, Jenny, talk about them being boring. They were worse than that. They were irrelevant. I mean, they're really the only, I mean, think about when Rex Ryan left. They were the laughing stock of the league. They were the biggest joke in the, the round. I mean, Browns fans could pick fun at the Bills. I mean, at that point. And they, look, now they're, they've gotten to the point <clears throat> where they've gone from the run to the litter, kind of to they're, they're known as a legitimate franchise and, and how to rebuild. I think yeah. that that's the biggest thing where you now have teams that go, we want to rebuild like Buffalo has. And like, I think that speaks volumes to around the rest of the league that GMs and coaches look at Buffalo and Sean McDermott, and Brandon Bean as to how they have retooled their entire image of a franchise. I think that that speaks the most volumes. Um, and the fact that they now be become a, a standard. The Bills have always chased standards. They always looked up to the standard in New England. They were always, Mike has always talked about it recently. The fact that New England in the, in the, the Bills weren't a rivalry. It, it, it wasn't a rivalry. They, they were the little brother. And mm-hmm. now just know that they're now, you know, the little brother's now kind of swinging back and is now uh, the little bigger and better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want to go back to the beginning of the whole thing. And it's funny, Micah Hyde was saying how different it is, you know, in 17 and the surprise of making it. But I think sometimes people and fan bases lose track of that. And, and I'll bring up the team you guys know. I follow the Eagles. And I'm hearing from fans – of the team now. And they're like, what difference does this make now? You make the playoffs. You don't have all your guys. You got to build. And I think to myself, no, that's wrong. I look back at that 17 bills team and there are still some core guys here, Yeah, you know, core leaders, but I give credit to a lot. Give credit to Terod Taylor and what Mm -hmm. he did for that team. Give credit to LaShawn McCoy. Yeah. Who in that building held things together You know, when you went to Nate Peterman, I mean, Sean McDermott made mistakes, but he had guys there to help them to start to build something. And they had the next year where they stepped back, but that's when they got Josh Allen and then they really took a leap. So I think that building part of it is is not a linear process. It's not like getting LeBron James. He brings two of his buddies and you got a championship team. That's not the way the NFL works. And when I look at them, Dan, I look at this team and it's funny as we're seeing the end of the Ben Roethlisberger era in Pittsburgh and all. I've always said to you guys, I think that is the franchise the Bills can model themselves after. Consistency and winning, and that is the standard. Do they win the Super Bowl every year? Yeah, you'd love to be what the Patriots just did. But 18 years in a row without a losing season, you kept your quarterback all that time, you kept your head coach. And when I look at that, I'd say, are the Steelers perfect? 
even in a bad year, though, they're going to end up with a non-losing season again. I think yeah. that, especially the city, I think that's yeah. maybe where the Bills should be. Yeah, the grit, you know, that they always talk about in Buffalo, yeah. whether it's, you know, just that consistency. It's the stability. I think that's what Bills fans have, have wanted for so long. And with the NFL being this, you know, not for long league and, and coaches and, and all these GMs getting, you know, in and out, all of a sudden, you, that's a great point to see Pittsburgh and to go, man, what Ben has done, what Tomlin's done. And Mike, you're totally right. They're not always AFC, you know, championship contenders, but you know, every single game that you go and play in Pittsburgh, what to expect. Yeah. And it's a high standard. And, you know, we, Tomlin has some great quotes of the standards, the standard and, and all of those things. But you look at it and Sean McDermott has a lot of the trust, the process, you know, uh, growth mindset. Like there are some similarities, both guys. I don't know if you knew this. They were college teammates. Did you, did you oh, guys know that? No, you know, what? yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Jenna. No, I, I think I can't remember what Bill's player said this after the game on Sunday. Um, but they said just like the foundation has been set. I think it was Josh Allen. Um, but I think that's the perfect point of like the found, like your foundation is everything. Talk about houses, any type of, when you're trying to build something, it's the foundation that you need to make sure is rock solid. And I feel like with the, the group that they have, obviously there's things that come up, there's, there's mistakes, there's, you know, things that happen, but I feel like the way as a whole, this team has been built and just also just. The, I know it sounds silly, but the respect that's in that building, like you look around at other NFL franchises, there's not a whole lot of respect inside the building or outside of the building. Um, so I just think that's, that's what you can really build off of. And we've seen the results in Buffalo. And again, now it's about moving back the goalposts and being able to do more. But I mean, this Bills team, especially now where they're headed, there's a, it's, it's all in front of them. Yep. And I think you make a good point there because this is what they've wanted to build. It's the platform. Now, look, every year is different. And the thing people have to remember about NFL teams, man, there's 15, 20 new guys, it seems like, every year. And even the players commented. Some of these young guys are like, oh, we just make the playoffs here. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. I mean, you got to work all year to do it. But now that they're in, and Jenna made the point of the work to do, so let's look at where they are. Now, Sunday, they have a chance to win, and they should win the division. I mean, come on, you're home against the Jets, who played tough, but that is right in front of you. That's a playoff game. Win it and advance. And yeah. advancing means being at home for the first playoff game. But, Jenna, there's still some room to move, yeah. and there's room to find an opponent. So I'm trying to think, Crazy. if you're a Bills fan, or a Bills player, I guess, but more of the fans looking at it this way, yeah. what's the path? What's more important? Is it to be a higher seed and not worry about matchups? Is it thinking about what the matchups could be? Like, where do you see the best path for this team to possibly go all the way? I mean, I feel like it's counterintuitive, but I feel like you just want to start, try and stay away from the Kansas City Chiefs. And right. whether that be being a technical higher seed um, and maybe not having as many home games or whatever, and maybe having to go to Tennessee instead, but I would just want to stay away from Kansas city. Look, I know the bills beat them earlier on this season, but that was when Kansas city was a different team. They were in that funk. Obviously they've been able to turn things on, figure things out, but I just feel like it's, it's funny because you think of the playoffs, you're like, you want to get the highest seed available. You want to fight for that. You want to get that. And it seems interesting but at the same point i just look at matchups because that's what this what the actual game is all about how do you match up against the other team the colts are going to be a high seed but or a low seed i always get that wrong high seed but uh they're a team that i don't think matches up well with the bills and we've talked about that so it's avoiding the matchups that you think would be the most detrimental to your playoff hopes and i would say the colts as well as the chiefs it's crazy too because i think in a weird way if they were to play the Colts in Indianapolis, it's a different dynamic yeah. than if you play them in January. Be well, and like I said, we're talking about, oh, like you want, like we've, we've said that, you you know, we want to host the AFC Championship game in Buffalo. It's all things. I don't think that team is built to host an AFC Championship game in late January in Buffalo. They're just not built to be that ground and pound team. The Colts are. The Colts are fine with throwing the ball 15 times a game, yeah. handing it off 40 in whatever the elements are. Yeah. That is a team. It's funny. The Bills offense will travel. Like they will travel to stadium indoors, domes. They will travel to the West Coast and play 
perfectly fine in the elements. It's I'm, I agree with Jenna. This thought of hosting, while some teams it will take them a little bit out of their element as well too. Like you just saw, I mean, the Falcons are a fringe team. I'm just using them as an example. They were uncomfortable in the in the weather on Sunday. The, the Bills yeah. obviously were able to to manage it, but they didn't play extremely well in the elements. They, they there wasn't their their best offensive game. So I'm with Jenna. It's, it's just the fact of whether it's. I'm not as afraid even about playing Kansas City to some respects. I saw what Cincinnati just did to them. I think that that defense is a little bit overrated as to how they have played the last nine or ten weeks where they're the number one rated defense. They played some really bad defenses. Cincinnati's got a good passing attack. We saw what they did against them. So I'm more of, with Jenna, the the matchup, I would like to avoid the Colts because the Colts would have to come to play in Buffalo. Um, but I'm not as scared about the Chiefs for for the defensive reasons. You know what's interesting to me, and you guys know how many times I've harped on the fact that the Bills have the better quarterback, and that usually is the difference. Yeah. And you look at two of the teams you're talking about that can be matchup problems. Now, we just saw what Josh Allen did to the Patriots, but, mm-hmm. you know, uh, New England can run the ball, give them the lead. They're a different team. We saw that in Orchard Park. Well, obviously, Josh Allen's better than Mac Jones. Obviously, he's better than Carson Wentz, right? When you look at those kind of teams, you say to yourself, well, that's a matchup. And it's kind of funny, isn't it, that you would look at those teams as not the greatest matchups. But that's likely who they're going to face early on, right? Mm -hmm. I think the odds are 33% you get New England, 31% you get the Colts. Like, it's leaning in that direction. And you would normally want to play where you have the superior quarterback. That's the NFL. Mm. But because of circumstances to Dan alluding to there that, you know, the Bills are a pass team. And if it's a bad, bad weather and they're talking about the possibility, maybe the Bills are even playing on Monday night, you know, in that first game. I think it makes it a challenge in that case. But at the same time, you know, I can see a scenario where you stay at the four seed. You have a tough game. Colts, Patri- uh, Colts or Patriots. And honestly, you know, if you're the Bills, you're at home. You no, know, even though Indy's a tough matchup, you got to win that game. You're yeah. at home in the playoffs. You lost to that team. Mm-hmm. You can figure some stuff out. And Josh Allen's a better player. And you find yeah. a way to accentuate your best player and make some plays and win. But if you're the four seed and the one seed is the Titans and you get the wins, if Cincinnati wins and Kansas City wins, Okay, let Mahomes and Burrow play it out, and I'll take my chances going to Nashville to play the Titans in week two of the playoffs and winning that game. I know they're tough. I know they can run it, but I think that is a game that if you're the Bills, um, I think that's a path where you can win and you can get back to the championship game. Mike, I have a question for you. Do you feel like the Titans are the most disrespected one seed? (laughs) Well, I think you're right. And I think it's because they lost Derrick Henry. Yeah. And because it was Kansas City was one. It was almost like, wait a minute. Wait, the Titans are one? Like people were wondering if they were going to lose out to the Colts, which could have happened. Yeah. Then the Colts fell a little bit here with a loss, but it could have happened. And instead they're there. And look, they're good. Mm -hmm. But I've seen this before with a team with some limitations and they're tough. They're all those things. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, I can. We saw them play. We saw Derrick Henry run all over them, and the Bills still should have won that game. Yeah. Game. While the matchup if I wrote, I will take my chances uh, against Ryan Tannehill, maybe more than Patrick Mahomes. Dan, I I think you're going to disagree with me, aren't you? I just think I saw what the what Tennessee has molded themselves into, and I think they they can be a problem because they are a team that doesn't make a ton of mistakes. They don't ask their quarterback to do a lot of things, and Derrick Henry is supposed to practice this week. So if Derrick Henry comes back in, I think he is absolutely the wild card. The other team that is just another wild card, I guess we could say, is that this Bengals team yeah. Yeah. is a lot of fun to watch. They are. And – you talk about this week, there's been a lot of talks about how well Levi Wallace has played and how well the secondary has handled and picked up the slack from Trey White's injury. Man, we saw I mean, Joe Burrow, another guy that should be a Pro Bowl quarterback, along with Josh Allen, 
has stepped it up to another level. And again, I know it's inexperienced a little bit. I think their defense still has some holes in it. But that is a guy that is playing really high-level football that I wouldn't necessarily want to get in a shootout with. Yeah. And there are a lot of other teams that I'd be comfortable getting in a shootout with. The Bengals right now, it's almost like they're too – they were projected to win four or five games this year. They're now going to run they, – they won the AFC North. North yeah. They are a, a, a dangerous, dangerous wild card team. Not quite the Bills of last year, but a quarterback on the rise, a star wide receiving core, and a defense that's nowhere near the Bills – but can cause some problems. It's funny. I was talking to Mike on the car ride back from the Falcons game, and I was saying how the Bengals kind of remind me of the Bills. Like in terms of having a quarterback that, you know, has a lot of star potential, star power, but like people are, are now being like, oh, I mean, obviously Burrow being a, a top pick ch- kind of changes things, but coming off the injury and then the wide receiving core like you talked about, and then them having some losses this season that were kind of head-scratching considering their level of play. Um, but yeah, I think that, that to me is the biggest, like, no, like puns aside the wild card though, because, um, I feel like they're a team that has some similarities to the bills and I'd be curious just them matching up with them. But I I think that's a team that, I mean, I've just been impressed by what they've been able to do. And Uh, it reminds me of Buffalo in terms of them kind of coming out of, I don't want to say coming out of nowhere, but them putting it together so quickly, I should say. I'm I'm with you guys. I would say the Bengals are like the 19 Bills with Stefan Diggs on the roster. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're like that's a team that's in the playoffs now and could be dangerous, but not quite what the Bills had maybe advanced to had already been in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. But you want to play that team right now? They're they're playing with house money. Yeah. Right? yeah. No yep. one has anything. So so let's go to the next thing, and I'll go to Dan first here. Um, Josh Allen. Has had a phenomenal year. He's right up there in the MVP category. And then yeah, he's not going to win. Last week hurt him in that. But beyond hurting him in that with the one game, he, he didn't have a good game. I mean, he ran the ball well. And I know I can see the comments already. But he did this. He did that. Yes, he ran the ball well. He made mistakes. He threw for 120 yards. His passer rating was, what, 10 or whatever it was. He threw three picks. And I know some were tipped and all that stuff. But come on. We're talking about Josh Allen. Um we got to be past those days, right? He can't have that day for this team to win in the playoffs. Yeah, that was – it was kind of what we talked about on the, the Buffalo Plus show on Thursday where I said this felt like it could be a little bit of a letdown spot. And I mean that in the sense of they were up 14-3, to 14-5, yeah. to five, marching down the field. Brian Dable's pressing all the right buttons. It's a Stephon Diggs pass. Josh is calling for him to throw it to him in double coverage. They're doing all these goofy things. And it's just like, oh, the Bills are going to run away with this. Josh makes a bad, immature, lackadaisical decision on a third down where he's rolling out and gives the Falcons life. And Jenna's favorite cliche is that the guys on the other side get paid too. And the Falcons took that and turned that into points. And all of a sudden we went, oh no. And it's really hard sometimes to, once you flipped off the switch, to flip it back on again. And it just seemed like they couldn't find any traction then in the passing game. Josh lost a little bit of confidence throwing the ball in the snow, in the cold, and whatever, and it just kind of snowballed on him. I just looked at that as that game got away on uh, that first Josh Allen interception, and that was a, oh, we're just going to cruise through this game, no big deal, and it was not the attention to detail that you need to have in a playoff game because we've said for the last four or five weeks, these are playoff games. Yeah, Any sort of kick there was going to be monumental, and it was going to pretty much put a dagger in that game up for all intents and purposes, and it didn't, and then Josh kind of spiraled out of there. They pivoted. It was nice, but again, Josh, that play to me really kind of signified that game. I feel like, too, though, I I think the attention to detail would just be different for this team preparing for the – like, it would be. Of course it would be. And I'm not saying – I get what you're saying about it being a letdown spot, but the Bills were the better team. They knew they were the better team. It was no secret they were the better team. And I think we've seen that play into the Bills' psyche for preparing for other teams this season. And I'm not saying that that's that's what they should be doing, but I just think when it's the playoffs, it's just the level of execution is just that much higher. You're not you're not doing goofy things. You're not doing it for the lulls. You know what I mean? You're (laughs) playing your you're playing your ball, and you're 
you're making the best decisions you can. I feel like, you know what it's like when you play another team, when you were playing sports, you would play a team that you were way better than you would try some stuff that normally you wouldn't try. Did it bite them in that game? Yes. Did it eventually, did everything sort itself out? Obviously that's the case, but I don't look at that as like, Oh, I don't know. Do you want to have Allen playing his best ball heading into, you know, the playoffs? Obviously, of course, but I think right. he was able to regain his confidence after that third pick. Though I was like, "Oh, yeah, okay, that's well, something." Jenna, I want to come right back to you on that and say, "I said, can they win?" And I'm, I'm talking about turning the ball over. I'm talking about three picks in yeah. the game, and we've seen that's it's every team's Achilles heel. But it really, you know, you're just I, I laugh. The Bills PR staff tweeted out back to back games without a punt. Now, now that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. They're, they're, and Josh even said it. They didn't punt because they threw three interceptions. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's not the same thing that happened in the Patriots game. Yeah. You can't yeah. do that. My point is maybe not even three interceptions and 110 yards. I think to win in the playoffs, they're going to need Josh Allen to be Josh Allen, right? Oh, I mean, absolutely. Of course. A thousand percent. You can't have three turnovers and expect to be even in a playoff game. Like, that's just not the case. Now, do you you want to have Allen throwing and being on his best game? Of course you do. But I don't look at that Falcons game. I guess I'm more reserved. I'm not looking at it as like, ooh, is Allen regressing? All these things. Now, a point, though, yeah. Dan, is the fact that Allen did not play particularly well in the playoffs last season in terms of some of those games. So what do you make of that? Well, this was just one of those circumstances. And, and I get your point, Jen, about, well, it's a Western team. But they're going to play a lesser team next week, and Josh can't do that again because we saw the Jets take Tom Brady in the box I, to, to the final I, minute. I think it's different. I don't know. I just, I, I really, I do think it's different. I don't. When we talked about me. when we talked about previewing this game, you wanted to keep the offense rolling, and to yeah. me, what that game was was they had gone. I think they had gone ten straight drives. Mm -hmm. with points or they had one turnover on down, I think, in the New England game. And it just seemed like this offense was really clicking. And you just don't want to have that hiccup. And to Mike's point, like, there's bad games and then there's whatever Josh had last on Sunday. <laughs> like, like it was just awkward. It, yeah. it, it was different. I'm, I don't want to harp on this, but I will. <laughs> Dan, <laughs> I'm talking about, we're not saying, look, if he has three picks and 100 yards, they're losing in the playoffs. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I think we know. I'm talking about, like, the level between what Josh needs to be and can this team win? Now, Jenna mentioned last year in the playoffs, I thought he played really well against the Colts. I thought he was mediocre at best against Baltimore, mm -hmm. and that was a tough game, and the defense yeah. really won that one. Yeah. And then he had a rough day, a lot of them did, against Kansas City. And I think Josh is better than that, and I think they need him to be. But I guess that's the level I'm talking about in these games where you have the better quarterback and them needing that in these postseason games. Yeah, you're not going to win by two touchdowns when you turn the ball over three times. Like the, yeah. the, the Falcons are not a good team, and they didn't make them pay really at all, and they got a lucky break. They, they if Matt Ryan's knees down a little bit later, we, we could be having a different conversation. Right? It, it would have been a game. I guess I'm saying that too. So yeah, yeah. Mike, it, it, this is when you have the best quarterback. It doesn't matter if you have the best quarterback if he doesn't play like the exactly. better quarterback. Yeah. Like, it, like yeah. it, it's that's the case. Like, if Zach Wilson plays better than anybody, the, that team, the Jets will probably win games. Your yeah. quarterback has to be at that level. All right, so let's transition now. Uh, Jenna, you were on the field for this game, and the yeah. weather was okay. It was, you know, yeah, it, it was wasn't fun. bad like it was. By the way, uh, does Jenna's scarf have its own Twitter handle yet? It should. Okay. Yeah. I didn't even wear the big scarf. <laughs> yeah, you went big scarf, in my head. Foxborough, right? That was and in that was in Foxborough, yeah. Broke that out for the holidays. And then yeah. this scarf. My mom knit that scarf. So if you want to take up the scarf, you gotta take it up with Val, and I would not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, but what we saw in that second half, again, you said one of yeah. you guys said pivoted, and they did, and they went to more of a running game, Josh and Devin Singletary. And Singletary's been better. Yeah. So it's a relatively small sample size. Mm -hmm. But Jenna, have they figured out the run game? I mean, they figured it out from where they were before. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know in terms of have they figured it out all of it? I don't know. But at the same point, I'm just happy to see some type of progress. Like, let's be real. I mean, how ineffective it was. It just puts so much pressure on Allen because he had to have his best game in terms of throwing the ball. And look, you obviously want him to be able to be 
effective when he does throw the ball. We didn't see that on Sunday, but I talked about this before of having a different way to win. And sometimes in the NFL, where we're at in the season, you just need to win. You don't need those style points. So just having a change of pace and having confidence in Devin Singletary running the ball and Dan is grinning and trying <laughs> not to contain his laughter right now. I'm not saying this offense should just run the ball. I'm not saying that at all. It still moves through Josh Allen's arm. But at the same point, it's nice to have something to go to when your guy isn't having his best game. Is that an effective way to win in the playoffs? I don't believe so. But at least you know going into things, Devin Singletary can pick up some yards for you. And the defense has to respect that, and that changes some of the ways they will play the Bills. Should I – can I go now or do I want to go? You go right you ahead, know. Dan. Dan's going to just say absolutely. Wait, not. Can, can you ask me the same question you asked Jenna? Because I feel like it was a great setup. Have the Bills figured out the run game? No. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I really wanted to get to. Like, let, let's like people say, like, oh, since the, ta- the second half of the Tampa Bay game, like Devin Singletary and all this stuff, like the second half against Tampa Bay, they were selling out in the pass and they ran the ball right by him. It's what good teams do. It's when you have when the ends and the, the defensive line is not respecting the run at all and they're rushing so fast upfield, you can run right past them. You can run right up the middle. You kind of blitz through the run. So congrats. They were down 21 points. The Bills ran eight or nine successful runs in that game. Then we played the last few games was Carolina, New England, and Atlanta. The Carolina and Atlanta games teams had nothing to really play for. And maybe Atlanta had a little bit. There's still a dome team coming to play in the snow. They wanted nothing to do with getting dirty and clogging up holes. And Devin Singletary got let loose. No care. And in New England game, we're talking about Devin Singletary. Josh Allen was still, I believe he was still the leading rusher in that New, Eng- in that New England game. So this thought that, that Devin Singletary is now turning into this star running back is just kind of a farce when you look at the context of what they were playing in has has as much as we talk about how you need to be able to run the ball in December football also factor in some of these defenses are kind of tired okay. they're kind of checked out they want to they want they're ready to be done with the season they don't want to plug up gaps and Devin Singletary's running through them congrats okay. Dan you created what's called a straw man argument you turned <laughs> have they figured out the running game into is Devin Singletary is star. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is they figured out who Devin Singletary is in the team. And we know this before it was Singletary or Moss or give Brita a chance or yeah. Antonio Williams. Like it's just what it was. They were all, Devin Singletary has become a more important player on this team. Josh has used him a little bit in the short passing game. He's become yeah. an outlet. He's also running with a little more purpose. I think he knows he's the guy. If they're going to run it, Outside of Josh, it's going to be him. And I think the offensive line loves it. Correct. And it has given them a little bit of identity. Deion Dawkins, and I know he's going through some health things, but he was running people over. There was a play on the left side, and he got out in front of it. That second-level blocking, we haven't seen a lot from this line. Agreed. running people over. I think that helps in the big picture. It's funny. It's the Chargers coach, the 12 year old. What's his name? I Brandon forget. Staley. Yeah, Staley, who talked about what the run game does to your team. And he's got a great passer. Sometimes it's just a mindset. And I do think they've they've unlocked just a little bit of it. And I do believe they think that they can run it a little better. It's a little point of pride. And they may Agreed. need it. They may need it for three minutes. They may need it for five minutes. They may need it for two series. They may need it, whatever. It's better now than it was. And they need it more now than they did before. So to that point, I think they have, at least at whatever level, found that it is a part of their offense now. And it doesn't have to be just Josh. It's competent. It's competent. You're at a level of competency. And Dable, oh, I'm sorry. And Dable has confidence in it, Dan. He didn't have confidence in it before. And what did the players say? I think it was Mitch Morris after a game that they ran it well, and he said, and then Brita was the guy, the running back. They were like, we want Brian Dable to feel confident calling running plays. Yep. I don't think he felt very confident before. And I don't think he thinks that's where his big plays are coming from. No, but they can I, run it a little. I agree. The confidence is there. I think it may be a little bit of false confidence. Okay. That this, like, that, I guess that's where I'm at. And you're right. I'm not trying to dog on, on Devin Singletary. Like, like to say this, they have run the ball better. I think the O-line 
has enjoyed these last few games where at least they haven't been comically bad at running the football yeah. and they have a little bit of that confidence and swagger if we can push some guys around. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do agree with that. I just think that to sit there and say like, this is a not a feather in their cap, but like, oh, I don't know how often they can turn to have Josh play that poorly and to turn to a run oh. game oh. That, that, that oh. this can work moving forward, especially in a postseason where a things – yeah. Where, things, where you can sit there and say like, oh, now they have another ace up their sleeve and it's a running attack no. to go with this. No. It's not that. Okay. No, it's not that. It's not that at all. Like in the playoffs, Josh has got to be his best. Josh. But at the same point, yeah. you aren't, there's a, an option for you to go to. There's, it's not just, well, sh well, I was about to swear. Whoa. <laughs> okay, Stefan Diggs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's if Josh is, is having a bad game, you have at least something else you can try that has been effective. A bad moment, too. He's in a little bit of like, you know, it's like a basketball. I say this all. It's like a basketball team that shoots threes, and they're struggling. They're missing. Yeah. Get it in the post. Get a couple foul shots. Try See to right the, the ship through. a little bit. Yeah, and then yeah. and then go for it. Dan, I would compare it a little bit to like <laughs> Kansas City's defense. Like, it's not who they are, but they're a little better since they've yeah. made some moves on that D-line that like, 100%. okay. We might not give up touchdowns on every drive. And I'm saying this after they fell apart in that Bengals game. I'm saying I agree. it's part of the team. It's not yes. the team. It's not so. their identity, but it's yes. something that they I'm could use. You literally, I thought your head was going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> this thought of like, the Bills have figured out the run game. It's like, yeah. okay. They no. figured out to what it should be for this current team going into the playoffs in 2022. So, and, that's a, and the biggest thing is that they have – confidence in it and yeah. i think that's what matters as before like you said like brian nabel was he confident when he was even calling these plays yeah. like i wouldn't blame him to be like oh let's see how this goes but just being able to be like you know what and i think that confidence is also huge for devin singletary like, you know what he i heard about it jenna what confidence is a hell of a drug exactly a hell of a drug. like a hide dan fates favorite quote but i i truly believe that is that factors in i really do <laughs> All right. Um, good stuff. Uh, I, I want to go back to our great sponsor, Greg Connors, who has said from the beginning of the year that the, the mode that this team is always in, which is win the division. Mm -hmm. Right. He mm -hmm. always says this when he makes picks, he goes, you got to win the division. He's right. He knows that. Sean McDermott has said it, it's what he said. It. So we're not doing picks here, but um, they got to win the division on Sunday. Right, Jenna? They take care of business on Sunday. Yeah. They get the Jets. Yeah. And I think this game is different than obviously the Falcons game because the division is on the line. It's yep. a team that played. I mean, the Jets played really hard against the Bucks last week. I mean, there's obviously they knew, know each other well. Um, I think there was a little a little bit of a letdown spot against the Falcons, but I think with what's on the line Sunday, I think you see a very motivated Bills team that wants to. They love saying you guys doubted us, yeah. like all that stuff. They love that. That's what yeah. they they love being in that role and. And I think they are looking forward to being able to say that after Sunday's game. Jets could be a little dangerous. We saw what they did against the oh, Bucks, yeah. And yeah. I mean that as older teams, week 18, just want to get to the postseason or just want to get to the offseason with no injuries. Zach Wilson's got a lot to prove. Robert Salah's got a lot to prove. A lot yeah. of these guys playing for jobs. This is one of those games where the Jets can literally do whatever they want and – Kind of hit the the effort button and just let it go. Yeah. And you have one of those? <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like that. This could be one of those games where they go. Well, let's have Zach Wilson throw it 70 times. Why not? No, I. I, agree. I think it's. I think it's a little. I think they're going to approach it. If I'm Robert Salah coaching this team, I'm saying let's approach this like it's a playoff game for us. Yep. Because it's a playoff game for the other team. And mm -hmm. as opposed to that clown coaching in the same stadium, Joe Judge, who makes a fool of himself. <laughs> I cannot go one hour without criticizing Joe Judge and his clownish comments. And Dan Orlovsky Timmy Tough just, Nuts. Oh, <laughs> destroyed him. But that's the kind of guy who gets a team to quit on him. No matter, yep. you can tell us a million times what you think. And then we see with our own eyes, your team's going backwards. If I'm Salah and I'm the Jets, I'm encouraged by what I saw. And I don't want to lose yeah. that in week Correct. 18. Correct. Whether they lose the game or not, I want my team to play hard, to play tough, and to see what it's like against a team. As 
as close as they're going to get to a playoff game this year, playing the Bills when it means so much. So I think they'll get a good effort. And and that's yeah. I think that's good for the Bills. I think watching I that tape last week will be a good yeah. thing. Yeah. And that's against Tom Brady and the and the uh and the and the Bucks. Yes. I, I will say too though, I feel like for this Dolphins team against the Patriots, I think they're gonna look at that game as the playoffs. You don't agree with that? I feel it's like it's tough I the way that they lost demoralizing way in Tennessee. And you know, you're right. And it's Tua in a big spot again. I, I think I think a lot I, of I think of it differently. I, I think a lot of the airs let out of that balloon that after after getting shellacked by Tennessee in that that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess I disagree. I just think especially at being at home. Well, that's guess, that's interesting. That would be something. I mean, you know. I mean, yeah, obviously the Bills don't want to rely on that happening. They want to right. take care of their own business, but I don't know. I guess I see it differently. Timmy Tough Nuts, yeah. Mike. That's yeah. the best. Uh, when, and when, by the way, when Orlovsky goes Timmy Tough Nuts on him. It was, it's classic. I retweeted it. It's so good. You know, Joe Judge, seriously. There are, no the golf, there, are no golf, there are no golf clubs in front of our guys' lockers. Orlovsky's like, I was on an 0 16 team. There were never golf clubs, golf clubs. in the, the locker room. <laughs> guys were always you fighting. You were just lying. And by the way, as we leave here, I just want to mention something. What a day that was in the Meadowlands last week. Because in one fell swoop, Antonio Brown, and look, I will say this. I do believe the man has some mental issues. I'm not making a light of this. I do think there's something just not right. His teammates are worried about him. But he's the guy that made fun of the Bills when the Bills were maybe trying to trade or did try to trade for him. Mm -hmm. And then he took that out of the picture because he's done this now. He did this to Tom Brady. And two... Yeah. Uh, my gosh, it, it, it makes Vontae Davis retiring at halftime look like the Bills had a ceremony for him after yeah. the game. I mean, it was the most, I'd say, embarrassing to a team way a guy has ever quit in the NFL. So make fun of Vontae Davis and the Bills quitting at halftime all you want. This guy quit on Tom Brady in the middle of the game, waving to the fans. Yeah. Um, but it was still tough for the Jets to lose the game that way. Mm -hmm. But I think they maybe proved a little something to themselves. So I'm I ready guess. for, I think, a competitive game. The yeah, Bills are 16-point favorites or whatever it is. Uh, go Al Davis, just win, baby. So we'll see what happens on Sunday. All right, that's going to do it for us for this week. We thank all of you for being with us. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And we appreciate all of our subscribers. For our mm -hmm. Buffalo Plus team, Jenna Cottrell and Dan Fates, I'm Mike Catalana. Thanks for watching. And we'll check you out the next time on the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel.